Wall Street takes the brightest people and smashes them into the pavement on a regular basis. There's only one bottom line on Wall Street, and that bottom line is how much money you make. This is like being in a foxhole all day long with your enemies. I've seen many people come close to blows over a transaction. Greed is ugly. Make as much money as you can so that you can get out of there before it turns you to the dark side. Wall Street is all about greed, the worst of human emotions, and just not a good place to be. But it's, it, it's great to try and make some money. You know, that's capitalism. I started my own hedge fund senior year of college in March of 2003. I work out of my apartment. I commute from my bedroom to my living room. I can do this pretty much from anywhere. I have an internet connection. Back in 1999, the stock market was going pretty crazy. I was in high school. My parents gave me $13,000 of my bar mitzvah money, put it into a discount online brokerage, and I turned that $13,000 into a fully audited pre-tax sum of $1.65 million. Mm. It all happened freshman year in college. I pretty much made a million dollars in five months. Give me that, you little bitch. I'm waking up in my dorm room, and I'm up 20 grand in the day. It almost wasn't real. It was almost like a video game. Tim Sykes is a trader that I've been reading about over the years, and I've had my eye on him. As a two-lane you know, sophomore, junior, he launched a hedge fund out of his dorm room. From all I know about his trading style and his pedigree and his smarts, you, you watch him. He'll, ha he'll have 20, 30 million under management soon. I'm 25, and I'm looking for respect because I, I haven't gotten any. Even though I've been doing this eight years, people still don't really take me seriously. That's fine. I, I plan on doing this another 50 years. 929, the market is about to open. There it is. It's 930. You know, it's sort of uh, unusual. The market's sold off about 50 points. No real, uh, no good reason. But the uh, stock has been under pressure, starting to find some buy sides. The market is open, everything's going haywire. This is all the buyers and sellers. Everyone's just panicking. They're just in their pants right now. It's going to be a crazy day. You bought 4,800 shares of a half in Half bid on the wire. I'm Bob Nunn. I'm a specialist and the managing director of floor operations for Cohen Specialists on the floor of the American Stock Exchange. 2,700 shares piled in trades of 20. You sold another 1,500 shares. Take a look. We'll, we'll certainly put best effort. Michael and I, uh, Mike Cavanaugh here to my right, we're monitoring about 12, 12 different securities. Right now it's off uh, about 12% on the day with some news this morning. One half bit size. Unfortunately, the markets are down right now because of the, the uh, plot discovered to uh, bomb the Holland Tunnel. Markets are not happy. Markets are not happy at all. There's a lot of things to be worried about. It's not a time to run in and buy the dip at the moment. You don't want to allow one mistake to undo everything you've just done for months. So we'll be playing it close to the vest and very conservatively. This is one of the busier uh, areas that we have on the floor, so it requires uh, a lot of attention. Really what we're doing is we're, we're, we're helping to transition price moves, both up and down. The American Stock Exchange, if you look at the structure of the building, the booths behind us are high in the air, and that's where the clerks used to lean over and with hand signals deliver the orders to the brokers on the trading floor long before we had cell phones down here. And the reason we used to do that is because that's what we were used to when we were outside on the street. The clerks used to hang out the windows of the buildings surrounding the Wall Street area, and they used to hand signal orders to the brokers who were standing in the street below. And those brokers would move from lamppost to lamppost where different securities were traded. Finally, in 1921, we decided to build a building and move indoors and stay out of the elements. This is the building that you see behind us today. I'm in the process of closing a loan fund. The target size is gonna be $500 million. We're getting the marketing materials out to potential clients and seeing approximately how much they will commit. This is not good. This is going 
going to create a major headache for me today because the colleague didn't do what he was supposed to do last night, which is send out documents that were necessary to be able to close today. And if we can't close today, we're going to lose the deal. There's just so much you can do yourself. You have to rely on outside service providers, such as lawyers and auditors. It's very important that everybody is with a program and stays on track. I'm usually on the road about quarter after 5, 5.30, and I'm in the city by 7. You know, there's a lot to do and a lot to get ready for. I'd like to know all the positions. I'd like to know what's going on in the world, what happened overnight. Market opens up at 9.30, and from there on in, my day is filled with just a whole host of different things. IFO to the moon, Alice. Uh, you missed it. IFO Sold. Sold. 8,000 trades at 92 take off. So the way a transaction takes place, you're sitting at home, you decide you want to buy a security. You call up your broker and say, I want to buy this stock. That broker will intend call his representative on the American Stock Exchange. That broker will take the order from the sales rep, and he will take that to what they call a specialist post. That's where we stand all day. That's a central location where all of the transactions take place in this particular security. If the broker wants to buy the stock, they'll pay the offer or the price that someone is willing to sell it, the lowest possible price. The guys walking around in the aisles are mainly brokers and traders. The guys behind the posts are the specialists. They're the ones handling the order flow, uh, sort of like the traffic cop, auctioneer, and trader, all in one. So I just shorted 2,100 shares of this stock, betting that it'll go down 597. Right now it's 590. I short sell small cap and micro cap equities. So this is the chart of the stock I'm playing. You can see this is uh, the past 10 days. It's really done nothing up until here when a newsletter promoted it. But it's, it's just bull news. I mean, after I did all my research last night, and I've come to the conclusion that this stock is going down big today. Look at this. This stock is about to break out. It's going, baby. This is going to be a damn good short later. Mark the time. It's at 10.15 a.m. It could keep going higher, or my guess, end of the day, it closes at $5.60. My whole strategy is trying to find these stocks that shouldn't be hot, and this, I believe, is one of them. Shorting is so mysterious. It's kind of like hedge funds. So if you run a short-selling hedge fund, phew, God forbid, you're the, you're the devil. It's unpatriotic. I mean, I'm betting against American companies. I'm rooting for them to fail. Little do they know that the companies that I'm shorting they don't deserve to have a high stock price. So I'm not a bad guy, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that bad guys are out there. When you short a stock, you're, you're basically taking a negative position um, in the company. And therefore, in order to take a negative position, you have to borrow shares from somebody who has a positive position. So it's actually kind of a loan. What do you leave? Why would you pay? Oh. You know what, tell Rob he just confuses the hell out of me. Why would you leave 3,000 shares to work? 3,100 shares to work. This work is not easy at all. You're always thinking. You always have to be thinking. Your brain takes a pounding. We've had people with heart attacks on the trading floor uh, have to be carried off. So there's a high level of emotion and there's a high level of stress and every day is a different scenario. And Wall Street is a great place because you never have so many that paid so much for adding so little. I'm basically calling you to tell you that I'm expecting to see the documents today. Um, let me stop you right there. You shouldn't have told me that I was going to be ready yesterday because I, in turn, told other people who were relying on this, and I'm very concerned. To be quite honest with you, I expect to see something by this afternoon. A lot of this business is driven by deadlines, deadlines that have to be oh, met because you have you a closing me, upcoming. Could you, could you put this away from me? So right now I'm going to write him an email and the partner that he works with just to make sure that we'll eventually get everything that's necessary betting 300 shares against this company right now. And I'm up, on my $2,000, I'm up $15. I don't want $15, I want $20. I gotta get more greedy. Come on, give me that. Damn. 670. 
Oh, look at this. This is a beautiful fake out. It's going right back up to 620. And meanwhile, the stock is breaking out. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. But in the afternoon, if the stock does what I think it's going to do, it should fade pretty nicely. This bathrobe is good luck. Every single one of my major winning trades has been with me. This is Timmy. No logo. My grandmother made this for me. I've made $554 on the day, and this is just small scalping. To make those $554, I've probably traded, well, I've traded 18,000 shares. So I've traded basically $100,000 worth of my capital. Even though I do have a big pile of money and I do have other investors, I'm half the fund. So if I screw up, I'm, I can't afford this, this apartment anymore. And I like this apartment. My goal is to build my hedge fund, to get taken seriously by the industry, to show that my strategy is viable. So I'm about to have a very wealthy potential investor come over. I am going to uh, explain just my whole strategy and basically try and get him to, to give some of his millions over to me. Tanking. Why do you have to tank right now? And this is why I hate planning meetings in the middle of the day, because right when you plan the meeting, the stock is about to tank. And then you're conflicted. Do I take the meeting, which is much better long term, or do I try and make a few hundred, maybe a few thousand dollars? We are a uh, we're short bias, short term trading hedge fund. The key is just finding these small caps and micro caps that are doing something. Because there's, there's hundreds, thousands of small caps, micro caps that do nothing. That's where my experience comes in handy, you know, because after eight years of doing this crap, stock is breaking perfectly. Ah, I, have to, I have to play this. You'll see, you'll see, come here. And it went up to 640 three times, and it kind of hung around 620, and now it's banging around 605 again. 4,000 shares, yeah. Take out 602. Take out six, there it is, boom. Price hit six and took out six. It immediately went to 590 because there was nothing but sells for those few seconds. So the key is to buy into that selling. Take out the sixes, bam. Right now I have 2,400 shares left. These stocks are so volatile that they can flip on a dime like that. As of 1.28 p.m., I'm up $1,086. And I'm out. One of the things that trips people up all the time in the trading game is that once you've hit your objective, you need to pull yourself out of the market and rest for a moment. We do that all the time. We're not just simply always in the market waiting for the opportunity to kind of float along and try to grab it. We're sitting lying in wait. You, you hit it perfect? Right on is negative 20. You're a, you're, a, you're a maniac. Is that perfect? Or That's like? freaking hysterical. So all we have to do is increase these by... By like a gazillion and yeah. you're good, good shit. The like art point. of what he does <laughs> is just to identify the rhythm of the market and when he's in sync with the rhythm of the market, he'll just stay with it. I work alongside with Chris Leonard, my senior trader. He is responsible for taking my decision as to what we want to put into the book and determining what is the most effective way to be able to actually put the trade on. Sometimes people say, well, why don't you just buy it? At times, it may be more prudent to buy it over the course of the day or over the course of several days where Chris becomes of enormous value. He is in a position to really understand what's going on in the marketplace. You don't just buy stocks, you also sell short stocks, which basically gives you the ability to make money in a downward market. When you're initially going into positions and, and then obviously exiting them, yeah, it's a little hectic, but you gotta expect that. Is this the next IFO? It's fitting the profile. The screen up here is telling me uh, across the board what the market's doing. Uh, each one of these panels, these lines, columns here, divided up by the stocks that we have here at the post. Each one of the specials is responsible for running their own panels here. How many 75 cents for 10,000 on this, right? If someone does come to the post and wants to sell a particular stock and there's no one around to buy it, we as specialists have to buy it. That's a federal obligation. We have to maintain a fair and orderly market. And we have to be willing to put our capital on both sides, whether it's the buy side or the sell side. It doesn't matter whether it's 100 shares or a million and a half shares. There is no natural buying and selling occurring all the time. 
Um, a lot of times you may have five or six buyers out here and we're the only seller. And it has to be done in an orderly fashion until such time that we can find natural sellers to accommodate those buyers. But let me get this clear. If there's no buyers, we have to buy. The day of the 87 crash, specialists were on the floor trying to borrow money against their insurance policies and double and triple mortgage their homes to stop the market from free falling. Someone needed to step in and buy when no one else wanted to buy. And that's where a specialist comes in. No, no, stop your light on a book. Wreck it. I'm showing like 2,000 at 68 for that. There are no contracts here. Everything is done verbally. Your transaction and your, your, your word is your bond. So uh, you have to have a high sense of integrity to survive that. One of the unique parts about the Amex here is I've seen many people come close to blows over a transaction and then be seen in the bar around the corner having drinks after work. So, uh, you know, it's a passion. There's a lot of passion that goes on here. It's not Monopoly. It's real money. I actually threw a $3,000 monitor at a guy once because he cut me out of a trade that I actually was entitled to. Um, cost me a $100 fine. I deserved it. I got a little overheated. Wall Street is a small community. Everybody knows everybody. It's a family. It's a tight group, and it's, uh, it's a passionate group. <laughs> Eleven Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange. Sure, it's a place of worship today, but before the late 18th century, somehow it didn't even exist. Before then, traders and speculators would gather under a buttonwood tree at the foot of Wall Street to trade informally. In 1792, they finally got their act together and started the New York Stock Exchange. Today, the exchange has a global capitalization of 21 trillion. Working with Rich Tech on discovering new managers that have great potential that haven't really broken into the market yet. My dream is to find a gay in a loft in Soho who's doing an incredible job and no one in the world had heard of him. I explained some of the process to Sandy and Sandy is introducing undiscovered managers at a rate of two or three a week. She just put word out that she was looking for these types of managers and everyone wants to help Sandy. I'll be meeting with Bruce today to evaluate whether there would be good chances of raising capital for him. To be able to judge him better, you have to meet their staff and you want to hear them elaborate on their investment techniques. We're a very, very specific fund that invests in turnarounds. The way we play the game is we hit a home run 10% of the time. And that means a $2 stock going to 20 or a $1 stock going to 12 or a $3 stock going to 15 How would you describe your strategy and how can it be, because you're mo it seems like you're mostly long. Typically we go into a situation and in turnarounds it's management, management, management. We bet on management. And turnarounds take a lot of time so we're patient. But if management doesn't perform and we give them a lot of slack and they don't get the job done, we get proactive. We get involved with the company. We help the company execute their business plan. Sometimes we get control. You know, we call up other shareholders and we sort of bound together to try to get control of the company and make things happen because we want to make money on our positions. We got beautiful views of Fifth Avenue here. That's what makes it special. After 9-11, most money managers that used to be on Wall Street moved up to Midtown and Wall Street is more of a synonym of that whole culture and industry rather than a particular geographical area. Yeah, the last half hour on the trading floor is really busy. It's really, uh, sometimes you got to really uh, concentrate, especially when the start, market starts to make a, a decent move like it is right now. There's nothing really out there that shows why it should have sold off, um, you know, 30% of what it was up on the day. But, uh, you know, it's taking a good hit here. You bought 4,900 shares with half ATS. Something caused it to sell off here in the last few minutes. Half of 24, 51 sold. 49 more trades at 51. 5,000 trades at 50. You bought 2,500 shares at Sounds half. like uh, HOM's picking up a lot more. Oh, I'm out. I'm out. Oh, no. What's he doing? I need to know what he's doing. You bought 4,800 shares at half GK. You bought 4,000 shares at half ATS. You leave 15,000? All right, listen, I'm going after you. Listen, you bought 4,400 shares and a half book. Who's the half bit, Jeff? 
He's almost done. He leaves nothing. Performance. Six hundred thousand fifty-seven sold. Thousand trades for fifty-six. Scoop. Fifty-four five thousand. Ninety bit away, buddy. Ninety bit away. Fifty-four for three thousand chance. Two thousand and fifty-nine. The most challenging thing is having to make split-second decisions. You can't really think that fast, even though you believe you can. You can't. It's, you're going on instinct. You're going on reaction. And that's the toughest part of the job, is having to stay focused through that. 5, yeah. Offers a light after that. He's Customers got no room. No, that's it. That's 63 it. for 4,000 to 4, take it. 4,000 to trade 64. What's the sale on the bill? 5 more trade 64. Not enough to get it there. 4,000 shares, man. 6,000 trades to 63. 2, 5, 5 up. Close them up. Amazing lot of stress. I can't tell you how many times uh, I've had what I thought were chest pains. <laughs> numbness in the arm and sweaty, uh, sweaty forehead and sweaty palms and dizziness. It's happened at least a half a dozen times. It's the most exciting job you could ever have. If you don't love this place, don't work here. You have to love it. You have to be passionate about it. You have to really care about it. It's a unique person that's uh, able to sustain a career down here. This is an endless curiosity in trying to predict the future. This is the afternoon fade that I'm talking about. I was about two hours too early, because once it cracked 590, you can see it went straight to 550, and I did not take advantage of it. I would have gotten to the $4,000 barrier that I wanted. This is ridiculous. I have I had 14,000 shares left. This is perfect, and I just missed it. You check back, you check back. I said 562 close. That was my call at 10 a.m. You rewind it. We can play this over and over again. <laughs> I still uh, fully expect this thing to tank in the uh, afternoon. End of the day, it closes at $5.60. So don't tell me you can't predict where the stocks are going because this was dead on. This is uh, opportunity uh, lost. In the end, we, we all learned a valuable lesson, not to walk away from the computer in the mid-afternoon when you think there's going to be a mid-afternoon fade. That's it. Lesson learned. Goodbye. Okay? It's a public offer, it's not me. Okay? So stop pulling my chain. Some of the ladies like me. Some of the ladies do not. Um, I don't even know. I don't know what I'm saying, but <laughs> it just sounded good. Oh, so cute. And we have the same hairstyle, too. And I'll have two orders of fries and a Coke with that, please. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>